What if you discover that you are not in total control of your brain, your most intimate thoughts, your plans, or your creative ideas? What if you are not really you, but you plus your autonomous neural networks working together? What if you have some allies inside your head that you don't know about? What if some of these neural nets are working against you? Isn't this something you should know about? Let's find out. Each one of us is born with what is by far the most fantastic, incredible, and complex machine in all creation. I am talking about the brain inside our heads, and I say machine as a simplistic first approximation, just to get the conversation going. To be more precise, our brain is a three-pound jelly-like organ made of somewhere between 80 and 120 billion neurons or nerve cells. I guess nobody knows the exact amount because neuroscientists keep giving different figures all the time. Plus, there's also a whole bunch of other cells called glial cells that give maintenance to the neurons, which also play a role on the performance of the human brain. Every brain is driven by chemical reactions and electrical exchanges. It consumes about 20% to 40% of the available energy in our body at any given time. Each neuron is connected to other neurons by long cables called axons at specific points called synapses. Given that there are anywhere between 1,000 and 10,000 connections along those cables, and each connection can be turned on or off at any given moment, this results in each brain having more possible different states than there are elementary particles in the universe. Those are a lot of possibilities, and for this reason, our brains have more computing power than we ever use. Once in a while, we find people who can do tremendous feats of memory, computation, or creativity, but this is not what I will be talking about in this short video. Paying close attention to what neuroscientists are learning and saying about how the brain and the neurons work, I think we can put together an hypothesis about the autonomy of neural nets. In short, I would like to argue that different neural nets inside our heads do their own thing without our consent or intention, or without us wanting them to do what they do. We should be aware of this happening all the time and be grateful that this autonomous activity takes place. But most interesting is the fact that a neural net will show a will and a purpose of its own. Neural net autonomy, how it works and what it means, is what I want to talk about now. Neural net autonomy is actually a great gift that comes for free together with our brain. Your brain is a combination of hundreds of these teams of cells. It is all of them together that make you be you and not someone else. Human neural net autonomy, that is, little parts of your brain working on their own, choosing their own goals, explains many things about how our whole brain works. You are the beneficiary of the autonomous activity of your neural nets. Other times, you can be the victim of these neural nets running wild. Nothing happens inside your brain without neural nets being a part of that. Nothing happens in your brain without several neural nets working together. Take your vision for an example. Nervous signals with different intensities are sent from the cornea to the brain, where they are translated by many other neural nets working together to produce an image. For you to see something, it requires several layers of neural nets working together to produce an image. This happens in the primary visual cortex region in the back of your head. 
One neural net specializes on black and white images, another on contrast, another identifies edges, and so on. From this region, it is sent to more than 30 other sites to make sense of them, placing them in space and time, and comparing them to previously stored experiences. Another network puts it all together to produce the 3D high-resolution images that flow through your head while you are awake. The same is true about the way your sense of hearing works or your sense of touch. Different neural nets detected by magnetic resonance images as small specific regions in your brain are activated when external impulses are processed to produce awareness. You are constantly building and rebuilding your perceptions of the world around you, updating the information in real time. These features of the brain are what allows us to learn and respond appropriately to the demands of our environment. So, what evidence is there to say that some neural nets act on their own? I would say there is plenty of evidence. Before we go into that, we must first realize that neurons are very sociable cells. Neurons are born and built to connect. They rapidly form neural nets, teams with other neurons. It is their nature to be sociable. In fact, we know that when the brain is growing inside a baby who is inside the womb of his mother, neurons compete to connect with each other as much as possible. The neurons that fail to connect or do not connect well proceed to activate an internal mechanism that self-destroys them. This process is called apoptosis and translates as the suicide of a neuron because of a lack of enough connections to other neurons. Neurons love to connect. Those that do not commit suicide. The metaphorical image I want you to use at this point is simple. Neurons that become sad because they are lonely or disconnected to other neurons commit suicide and get out of the way and stop wasting valuable energy. If neurons commit suicide when they are disconnected, this means also that they must keep busy looking for connections all the time. The same is true for neural nets. They want to connect and make, make sense all the time. This is one reason for saying that brains are built to learn, and nothing is as pleasurable as an aha moment when everything comes together inside your head. Now, we also know that neurons that fire together wire together. This means that synaptic connections are strengthened each time that firing between two neurons takes place simultaneously. As a person masters certain physical activities, deeper and more trustworthy pathways are created in the brain, much in the same way as a river carves its own riverbed. In practical terms, Farting together means becoming buddies and saving each other from suicide. The next step is simple. Neurons tend to fire together more often when whatever it is that they do together is successful. Neurons get dopamine doses, a natural opiate from other neurons, as a reward for success of any sort, and that is in itself helping to strengthen the mutual connections between neurons. This is a self-reinforcing cycle, and this is the reason why a fully developed brain has established channels where signals flow with certain regularity. Since we are interested in pinpointing autonomous neural net activity, then we must first be clear about what it is to be conscious or to describe conscious mental activity. 
Your mind, says Antonio Damasio, is a flow of mental images. When that flow includes a reference to you as the author of that flow, then you are being conscious. A conscious mind is a mind with a self in it. To produce the conscious mind, you need the convergence of two flows of signals or inputs into one region of the brain called the reticular activating system, or RAS. On the one hand, traveling upwards from your spinal cord are all the messages with information about your internal milieu, the management report of how your body is doing, so to speak. This information has to be quite stable because the physiological limits of the human body are very strict. Then you have the information coming from the neocortex traveling downwards. Both informations meet at the RIS and produce the film or 3D ultra high resolution video that flows through your mind when you are awake. Given brain specialization, the same regions used by the brain to create images are the same regions used to produce and reproduce the images from memory. Also converging is the information captured by your senses of eyesight, hearing, as well as the maps created in your mind that allow you to know where you are and where is your body in relation to your environment. Neural nets constantly make maps of everything that surrounds you and also maps of everything within you. Information about your body's internal environment is constantly updated and used to give you the reference point needed to produce a permanent identity. As I said, this occurs in the reticular activating system that includes the midbrain and pons. When these two sources of information, upwards from your spinal cord and downwards from your neocortex, the newer part of the brain, come together in the reticular activating system, they produce your consciousness. Consciousness is the video playing in your head with everything that is going on around you and tied to a unique internal you, which you have as a reference for everything that is going on outside. The feature that we are interested in the most is that this activity is done without any conscious effort of your own, but it gives you your awareness of the situation you are in at any given moment. So, it turns out that you are the emergent property of many neural nets working together and you appear to take care of what your body does in its external environment. Very well, so let's proceed to the examples of neural net autonomy. The most obvious proof that neural nets have a will of their own, that they are busy even if you are not doing anything in particular, is the electrical activity in the synapses captured by an electroencephalogram, or EEG. More accurate and detailed still are the functional magnetic resonance, or fMRI, images, which show different areas of the brain as they are activated in connection to the processing of images, sounds, memories, emotions, or motor activity. The fMRI captures the consumption of oxygen when neurons are active. Another example of neural nets acting autonomously is when we dream. Dreaming has nothing to do with our conscious decision making. Your reticular activating system is turned off. However, when you produce a dream and you see an image in your head, this is proof of a neural net playing a video without your consciousness having anything to do with it. I find this third example very appealing. 
it is something that happens to many people. They go to bed with a problem of some sort and wake up in the middle of the night or in the morning with a solution. Sometimes you are trying to recall a name or a number or an address and you find it plenty of time after you gave up trying to remember. This means that somehow a neural net was triggered to search for the answer. The only possible explanation is that a very specific network tried a series of connections until, alas, a successful connection was identified and it is displayed as a recordable image. This means that one neural net sets the problem, another network searches for the answer, and the messages with the findings get back to their neural net that posed the problem and now makes a match with the solution. Then another neural net stored the solution for you to remember in the morning. I dare say that you use different neural nets to solve the problem without your conscious effort, simply because we know that neural nets are highly specialized. Further proof of net specialization is the fact that the same region of the brain that is used to build a certain image that you see is the same that is used to remember this image. A fourth example of neural net autonomy I take from a TED conference by Oliver Sacks. Dr. Sachs specializes in treating older men and women. He says that about 10% of old people losing their eyesight experience hallucinations in spite of being otherwise perfectly healthy. As older people lose their vision, certain parts of the brain are no longer getting any input and they get hyperactive and excited and they start to fire spontaneously. People start to see things. Very detailed visions appear suddenly, coming from nowhere. This explanation confirms the case for neural net autonomy. The regions of the brain in charge of producing images from the direct stimulation coming from the eyes start acting on their own when deprived of sensory stimulation. A very similar fifth example are the hallucinations suffered by people who are placed in a sensory deprivation tank. Prolonged submersion in a noiseless and dark tank with water or oil, which is at the correct temperature, sends the deprived brain into a frenzy of self-produced images. Here is another example, number six, chronic pain. Here you have a pain-producing network which is producing pain on its own. I can only speculate that this is pain that somehow got reinforced and gained momentum on its own, well after the painful episode subsided. I say this because magnetic resonance imaging allows us to identify the area producing the chronic pain. When this is done, Patients get to see what is happening inside their brains and can learn to turn the pain signals off. One has to think that the reverse is how it started. You learned to produce the pain. Maybe, just maybe, the pain got reinforced as part of an attention-getting mechanism. Remember that neurons are social cells and that getting attention is their primary goal in life. For more on future treatments of chronic pain, you can watch Christopher the Charms on TED. I find neural net autonomy very interesting because that can be the true secret behind personal success. Neural networks work while you are asleep or distracted by something else. They constantly want to make sense. They make connections and try different solutions until they find something that works or matches another previous solution. What this means is that you and I can train our brains 
to look for answers to quite complex problems without us having to think them through consciously. If we could find the neural net that does the triggering effect, it would in turn stimulate other neural nets to search for the answer. Pattern recognition is the forte of neural nets since they are rewarded when they make the right connections. They will continue to work for free until a solution is identified. It might not be the right solution, but then you can search for another and another until you get the one that fits you, the person, best. You are you plus your neural nets working together. Neural net autonomy provides a real-world explanation to the secret, or law of attraction. In another of my YouTube videos, the one about psychocybernetics and a 10-minute self-improvement method, I explore this connection in more detail. Please be aware that there is nothing to disprove that one or more of your neural nets can be working against you taking you in directions that you would really not want to go if you were taking a conscious choice. I would say that a lot of criminal activity is the product of neural net activity that is allowed to grow unchecked. Once a network has gathered a lot of strength, it will have a capacity to overpower other parts of your brain. This seems to me a good explanation of why it is that criminals display compulsive behavior that is fed forward, increasing them drastically with each new crime. This also is an explanation of why it is that praying can help find solutions to your problems. Human neural net autonomy is a very powerful tool that different parts of your brain can give you, so you can use at your leisure. The point to be made clear is that you cannot attribute to your brain as a whole what are really neural net autonomous activities. That's it.